Hello again, everybody, and uh, thanks once again for joining us for Thursday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist David Percy, and I'll be hosting today's show. And up uh, first, we've got the fire danger graphic, and uh, very high fire danger, Yukon Flats, actually losing some of the extreme fire danger, not quite as extensive as it was yesterday at this time, due to a little bit of moisture that got up uh, into that area there, and some cooler conditions, more clouds. And still quite an area of very high fire danger though from the northeast interior south of the Berks Range all the way down into the central part of the state, down into the, mainly the Cuscombe Valley southward into northeast Bristol Bay. Looks like a little bit of uh, some extreme fire danger showing up now over the central Cuscombe Valley. And uh, high fire danger over the southwest interior away from the coastline there and to a much lesser extent over the eastern uh, Seward Peninsula area. South Central Alaska, Susitna Valley, uh, less extreme than what there was yesterday, but still very high fire danger throughout the entire Susitna Valley into right into Northern Cook Inlet and the Kenai Peninsula there with an expanded area of extreme fire danger over the inland areas of the Kenai Peninsula. Uh, temperature again this afternoon at two o'clock into the lower 80s in many areas uh, from Soldotna eastward into the uh, Swanson River area, 83 degrees. Uh, granite there on the Seward Highway, just south of Turnigan Arm, 83 degrees also. And temperatures in the southern Susitna Valley rising into the lower 80s once again, as is e East Anchorage. So, uh, fire danger still on the high to very high to extreme across South Central Alaska, but uh, you can see it abruptly cuts off as you get in uh, up the Madnuska Valley there and into the Copper River Basin due to the days of uh, showers, daily showers and uh, thunderstorms over that area. But starting to get high again on the north side of the eastern Alaska range. And uh, actually that uh, looking for less in the way of shower activity in the outlook coming up with uh, hotter conditions for the uh, eastern interior areas uh, starting Saturday and uh, temperatures into the 80s up into the Tanana Valley and probably in the mid to upper 80s possibly on Sunday over the eastern interior including the Copper River Basin. Otherwise satellite imagery today showing an extensive area of low clouds over the Gulf of Alaska that's right up into Prince William Sound extended over into Whittier today along the south coast of the Seward Peninsula there and along the coast of the Panhandle then it goes clear, clear skies, Kodiak Island, Alaska Peninsula, and southward, and then back to some low cloud conditions on the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula, but lots of sunshine up over Togiak Bay, southern Kuskokwim Valley there into uh, south central Alaska. Again, Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, picking up some clouds uh, as you head north, mostly mid and high level clouds up toward the Alaska Range, with thunderstorms developing once again over the Talkeetna Mountains, and uh, those shifting eastward with more westerly flow instead of dropping southward as they did yesterday. So that'll be shifting into the western Copper River Basin. Also thunderstorm activity developing in the area upper Tanah Valley 40 mile country from Eagle down toward Northway and you can kind of see those starting to build up here in the latter frames of the loop. Otherwise uh, kind of a lot of uh, cumulus developing northwest of Fairbanks up toward the Brooks Range and then solid clouds out toward uh, Norton Sound, Seward Peninsula and up along the northwest coast southwest flow continues to bring surges of moisture out of the northern Bering Sea there up into the northwest part of the state and then that kind of breaks up as it crosses the Brooks Range there into the Arctic coast in the north slope areas but widespread clouds out over the Bering Sea and you can see uh, front lifting northward there across the uh, ADAC area and pushing uh, gale force winds uh, eastward toward the Unmak Island area during the afternoon today. And another surge of moisture pushing up uh, into the northwest part of the state as another one kind of exits the eastern interior there or ships eastward there across Fairbanks. That kept temperatures down from what they were yesterday up in the uh, Tanana Valley area. 
but still uh, rising up to uh, near or into the lower 80s over the areas of the Yukon Flats there. And uh, Copper River Basin a little warmer today with more sunshine, 70s to near 80 mid-afternoon temperatures there. And the Panhandle, dry day with temperatures around lower 70s up in the northern Panhandle, kind of a lot of low clouds over the southern areas, keeping a little bit cooler there. But you can see lots of clear skies, Kodiak Island, and that front uh, in the central Aleutians there brought gale force winds, gusts 40 to 50 miles an hour to the central Aleutians today with about uh, three quarters of an inch of rain falling at Adak and Atka in the last 24 hours. That hasn't pushed into uh, the Pribilofs of the Fox Islands yet due to high pressure along the southwest coast there. And then surges of moisture bringing rainfall to the northwest coast, again extending back into the Bering Strait area, kind of a trough uh, elongated there. Uh, kind of a continuous light rain pattern there uh, that brought, uh, let's see, no attack and uh, Kivalina, both picking up about a third of an inch of rainfall in the last 24 hours, lighter amounts off to the east and northeast there as well as to the uh, south, but uh, over to the uh, eastern interior, uh, scattered showers and thunderstorms, salsa, salsa up uh, there east of Fairbanks had about a third of an inch of precipitation, while Isleson Air Force Base had a tenth of an inch, uh, for example, there. That helps keep the fire dangers down a little bit, but that rainfall isn't really all that widespread up in that area. It's more localized and actually is going to be diminishing over the next several days. And for tonight, though, uh, variably cloudy, light winds, no gradient at all over the state. That's back up toward the and off the western Arctic coast, actually in the Chuck CC there. And now we're kind of pulling back into the Russian Far East and then the central Bering Sea in advance of that frontal boundary. That's where the wind, breeziest conditions will be. Still looking at uh, 25 gusts 35 for the uh, eastern Aleutians, east of Atka to about uh, Unimak Island. And then uh, still pretty breezy for the uh, Cape Lisburn Point Hope area and up to about Point Lay could see gusts 25 to 35 miles an hour there, but lighter winds down toward the Bering Strait, St. Lawrence Island. Low clouds and fog in the Gulf of Alaska, some drizzle possibly there too for uh, Cape St. Elias. Maybe Cordova, that's really pushing it there. Probably possibly some shower activity around Yakutat. Whatever does fall will be quite light. And then kind of a mostly cloudy pattern, but dry with light winds over the panhandle as uh, basically high pressure covering the entire Gulf of Alaska or actually just due to a lack of storminess uh, with the center down to the south and the one out to the west and up to the northeast here near the Great Bear Lake. And for tomorrow, high pressure, sunny skies, mostly sunny over the central western interior. Even the eastern interior will be mostly sunny, scattered showers, isolated thunderstorms developing, possibly into the northern panhandle and also up over the Eastern Brooks Range, maybe some shower activity, but notice drier conditions now there with that Southwest flow, again, pulling back to the Northwest, just grazing the Western Arctic coast with maybe some light drizzle, possibly light rain, fog in that area, lower flying conditions, front pushing eastward and weakening rain. Fox Islands, periods of rain for the Western Alaska Peninsula, a wet day for the Pribilof Islands with probably IFR flying conditions covering much of the Bering Sea and uh, kind of a pickup in the showers over the west central Aleutians with that trough back that way, but very light winds. Look for widespread low clouds and fog over the Gulf of Alaska right along the southeast coastal areas, but partly sunny to mostly sunny inland. Probably uh, start uh, mostly sunny day for Kodiak. Some of that low clouds and fog will start to shift uh, westward and you can see by Saturday, it's covering all of Kodiak Island, looking for marginal VFR flying there, low clouds and fog, resulting in cooler temperatures, now pushing up into southern Cook Inlet as well. Look for some scattered, isolated thunderstorms over the Wrangell Mountains, otherwise interior Alaska and Tana Valley, highs into the lower 80s, and uh, about maybe a little bit cooler for south central Alaska, especially the Kenai Peninsula, with a little more marine air coming in with that high center over the Gulf, and kind of a west-southwest flow coming up Cook Inlet there bringing the marine layer into central Cook Inlet and uh, kind of touch and go there in Prince William Sound area, but mostly sunny for the panhandle. Periods of rain and looks like gusty winds. That could be a gust 35 mile an hour pattern for Cold Bay. Definitely wet conditions from uh, say southwest of Pilot Point all the way out to the Fox Islands and the Pribilofs now right on the edge, but some of that moisture edging its way eastward into the southwest coast. Lows tonight, 40s and 50s over much of the state, near 40 over the Arctic coast. Highs tomorrow, 70s, lower to mid over the Tanana Valley, a little cooler in the Susitna Valley, Kenai Peninsula area. 
and uh, for Friday afternoon and a little bit warmer 70 75 or about like today for the northern panhandle lows 40s to lower 50s up to upper 50s in the Susitna Valley area lower 50s for the panhandle followed by highs 78 upper 70s lower 80s central interior areas and uh, 60s and mid 70s south central Alaska and now aviation weather around Alaska and moving on flying weather for Friday morning Marshall VFR central western Arctic coast north slope and uh, along the Brooks Range and also Norton Sound and the Seward Peninsula Nunavak Island Bering Sea and Aleutians IFR VFR Bristol Bay Kodiak Island all over the interior Marginal VFR along the south coast of the Kenai Peninsula up into Prince William Sound, North Gulf Coast, and along the Panhandle outer coastline. VFR over the inside waters with IFR right near or just off the North Gulf Coast. And for the afternoon, Friday, not much change out that way. Looks like some marginal VFR now across the Barren Islands coming on up into uh, southern Cook Inlet, Kamishak Bay. And uh, just off the Kodiak Island area, just to the east there. Otherwise, VFR, Bristol Bay, Aleutian Range, right up into most of interior, all of interior Alaska, right on up to the Brooks Range, north of the Brooks Range, areas of marginal VFR with some areas of scattered VFR around, and IFR for the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. And for Saturday morning, IFR uh, just south of Prince William Sound in the North Gulf Coast. Otherwise, VFR for the Panhandle. Marshall VFR, say from Elfin Cove, right along the coastline, uh, just south of Yakutat, but uh, up across Cordova, Cape Yakutaga, hanging up on the uh, coast range there. So none of that getting in the Copper River Basin. But Southern Cook Inlet, you've got uh, Marshall VFR from near or just south of Kenai on down all the way to the Barren Islands, covering much of Kodiak Island now. No change over the interior, good VFR, even the North Slope and Arctic Coast looking good. With solid IFR from St. Lawrence Island southward across the Bering Sea, all of the Aleutians and the Western Alaska Peninsula. For the afternoon, that area of uh, IFR slides up along the south side of the Alaska Peninsula to uh, Sitkanak Island, otherwise marginal VFR, Kodiak Island into Southern Cook Inlet, Kamishak, Kachemak Bays and possibly up into Resurrection Base, a marginal VFR, but uh, Prince Liam Sound, interior Alaska, all VFR, even the eastern North Gulf Coast and the Panhandle, looking really good for Saturday afternoon VFR, right up to the Arctic Coast and into the Arctic Ocean, we've got VFR, but out west, Bering Strait, western Seward Peninsula, all of the Bering Sea and the Aleutians, looks like it'll be IFR. Anatuvik, IFR to start, becoming then a VFR by the afternoon, through the afternoon. Adigan is improving also, starting out IFR, but only improving to marginal VFR in the afternoon. Lake Clark and Merrill, another VFR day coming up. Chalk up another VFR day for rainy as well. Windy looks good, VFR on either approach. And Isabel, VFR. Mintesta, VFR as well as Tanita, another VFR day there. And for Portage, uh, Marshall VFR in the Eastern Approach, otherwise VFR out the uh, Portage side. <clears throat> Chilkoot and White, VFR, freezing level six to 10,000 feet over interior Alaska and in the Northern Bering Sea up to 12,000 feet near the Fox Islands. Icing, uh, isolated moderate rime icing, six to 13,000 feet, Brooks Range, North Slope, Arctic Coast. And with that, uh, slowly advancing frontal boundary out over the Bering Sea, kind of a widespread area of isolated moderate from the St. Lawrence Island area, southward across the Pribloffs of the Fox Islands and the Western Alaska Peninsula. Jet stream, upper level ridging right over the Bristol Bay area up into the southwest part of the state. So we've got uh, westerly 60 knots, turn northwest 60 knots over the Yukon Flats and then turn northerly at 60 knots, Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound, Southwest 75 knots over the eastern Aleutians and southwest 70 knots near Nunavak Island. And for the uh, 9,000 foot windfall chart showing high pressure right over uh, south central Alaska and southwest of Kodiak Island. Over the Bering Sea, winds picking up and then shifting eastward a little bit. 50 knots there coming in toward the Yukon Delta coast, 40 knots out of the south southwest. Uh, 35 to 40 knots actually over the eastern and southeast Bering Sea. Central Aleutian is about 30 knots. And for 3,000 feet, south winds 
35 to 45 knots over the eastern Bering Sea from the Fox Islands, St. Lawrence Island, southwest 40 knots for the western Arctic coast there. Light and variable over interior Alaska, the Panhandle and the Gulf, all looking pretty light wind-wise. Turbulence, uh, isolated moderate, surface 5,000 feet, uh, Cape or Point Hope, Cape Lisburn, maybe Kivalina down to St. Lawrence Island, as well as the western Alaska Peninsula and uh, the Fox Islands with smooth conditions elsewhere around the state. Hi Star Ken, Trace here. Earth's sky is full of legends, humans, monsters, animals, kings, and of course, Queen Cassiopeia, which is one of my favorites. Let's find her before we tell the story. Hit the darkness at 11 p.m. and look northwest. You should see the Big Dipper asterism standing on its bowl. If the dipper is at 12 o'clock, Cassiopeia is that W shape at about four. Everyone in the sky is there for a reason. Cassiopeia is a lesson against personal vanity. 20 centuries ago, Cassiopeia was told to be so, so beautiful, but vain, boasting that she was hotter than even the sea nymph Nereids, which is a big no-no. They were like the ancient hotties of Greece. And like mean girls do, they said, you can't sit with us. They told their dad Poseidon, and he wasn't happy. As punishment, he placed Cassie upside down in the sky, spinning around and round. But now, at least today, we can admire her. So keep looking up. been to the beach and noticed litter like plastic bottles or foam takeout containers on the sand? Or maybe you've been to a river or bay where there's a bag or a car tire stuck in the mud on the shore or a bunch of deflated balloons that say happy birthday floating in the water? All of that junk in the water or on the shoreline is considered marine debris. It's anything solid and man-made in the ocean or Great Lakes that is not supposed to be there. And anything people use every day can become marine debris if they don't dispose of it properly. And I mean anything. The most common items we find when we do shoreline cleanups are plastics. But we also find rubber, cloth, glass, metal, and paper litter. Sometimes the debris is so tiny, like a plastic microbead from your face wash, that you can barely see it in the water. Marine debris is more than just trash in the ocean. Sometimes fishers lose their gear like fishing traps, nets, or fishing line, and it continues to drift through the water, catching animals for a long time. We call that derelict fishing gear, and it's marine debris. Have you ever seen an old boat left behind on a shoreline? Abandoned and derelict vessels are also marine debris. So let's review. Anything we use every day can become marine debris if we don't dispose of it properly or if it goes into the water by accident. Marine debris can be very small or can be very big and anything in between. But most importantly, marine debris is one of the biggest pollution problems facing the world's oceans and waterways today. How does marine debris impact the ocean, animals, and me? Would you want to swim in a beach littered with trash? Of course not. And the animals who live in the ocean don't either. The difference is, they don't have a choice. Marine species often get tangled in debris, from fishing nets to six-pack rings. If they get caught, they could get injured or even die. And even if they don't get entangled, many animals mistake plastic debris for food and eat it. This fills their stomach with junk they can't digest. Debris can also damage important habitats, like coral reefs, by breaking or smothering them. Corals serve as the base of the marine ecosystem, and impacts here can be felt all the way to you and me. Plus, plastics have harmful chemicals in them. Fish eat plastic, we eat fish. No, no, no. The question is, can those chemicals harm us? Marine debris also hurts the economy. It costs a lot of money to clean up, and people don't want to go to dirty beaches. Boats and ships could run into large pieces of debris, too, or get their propellers tangled. We need the ocean and everything in it, and the ocean needs us to keep it free of debris.
can we do about marine debris? A lot of the trash that's in our ocean is plastic. And that marine debris is hurting our environment, economy, and health. The problem will only get worse. Unless we change the way we consume and dispose of products. There are solutions. And together, we can prevent litter from ending up in the ocean. Some people might say, well, I'm just one person, so I can't make a difference. But that's just not true. If each person who creates trash, and that's just about everyone, took action, it would add up to a whole lot of change. So what can we do? Well, the ultimate solution is prevention. And we need to keep that as our highest priority. We can reduce, reuse, and recycle to keep debris out of the ocean in the first place. You can bring your own shopping bag, drink out of a reusable bottle, and participate in things like a shoreline cleanup. Join a group cleaning up the beach or grab some friends and clean up your street. It's easy. Be more conscious of how many disposable plastic items you're using. And if you do, where are you putting it? In the trash can? Whoops. Or in the recycling bin? So here's the challenge. The next time you finish using a throwaway item, a bag, a bottle, or utensil, answer the question, where is this going? Because ultimately, when you throw stuff away, there really is no away. It has to go somewhere. So keep asking yourself this important question. How will you keep your trash from becoming marine debris? And now, marine weather around Alaska. Coastal water forecast along the outer coast of the Panhandle. We've got northwest winds in, at 15 knots of 4 to 5 foot seas for the central and south coast. North coast, west winds 10 to 15 knots, seas 3 to 4 feet. Lincoln Isle Glacier Bay, south winds at 10 knots. Light variable winds over the central inside waters and then back to northwest at 10 knots with 2 foot seas for Clarence Strait. And then for the day on Saturday, first day of the weekend, not much change. Uh, light winds, light variable winds over the inside waters, anywhere from uh, 5 to 10 knots with slight seas. Central and south coast, northwest winds, 20 knots, seas 7 feet. And the north coast, looking at a westerly wind on Saturday at 15 knots, seas running 4 to 5 feet. Prince William Sound for the day Friday, light variable winds at 10 knots. North Gulf Coast, light variable winds at 10 knots. Seas even along the North Gulf Coast down to two feet. And for the Barren Islands, southeast winds 15 knots. Seas only two feet there. And Kamishak Bay though, four foot seas with a southerly 15 knot wind. Looks like the strongest winds will be in Southern Cook Inlet out of the southwest in the afternoon to 20 knots with five foot seas. Northern Cook Inlet, southwest winds 15 knots. And for Saturday, Cook Inlet, south to southwest winds, 15 knots, seas 3 feet. Prince William Sound and the North Gulf Coast, light variable wind conditions, 10 knots or so with seas running 2 to 3 feet. Barren Islands, winds will be south, 20 knots, seas 3 feet. And for Kamishak Bay, southeast winds at 20 knots, seas 5 feet. Kodiak Island, variable winds at 10 knots, seas only 2 to 3 feet. Alaska Peninsula, winds will be south to southeast, 15 to 20 knots, with seas running 3 feet. And Bristol Bay, variable winds at 10 knots, with virtually flat seas. And for Saturday, Bristol Bay, winds come up to uh, small craft advisory level winds, southeast increasing to 25 knots, seas building to 6 feet. Alaska Peninsula, windier there too, southeast winds 25 to 30 knots, with 6 to 9 foot seas. Kodiak Island, variable to south winds, 10 to 15 knots with four foot seas. Small craft advisories for the eastern Aleutians on Friday for south to southeast winds, 25 to 30 knots, seas 7 to 11 feet. And for Adak and Atka, lighter winds behind the front, uh, out of the south, 15 to 20 knots, seas 7 to 10 feet. 20 knot south winds from Chitka Island with nine foot seas and northwest winds, 15 knots from Kiska to Shimia. And for Saturday, Kiska to Shimia, southwest, 15 knots. Yamchitka Island, Adak and Atka, all looking at a west wind at 15 knots for the day Saturday with three to six foot seas. And for Unalaska Island, small craft advisories, south winds 25 to 30 knots with seven to nine foot seas. But behind the front for Unmak Island, winds will be lighter over toward Nikolski. 
Southwest 10 to 15 knots, seas down to four to six feet. Small craft advisories for the Pribilof Islands, as well as St. Matthew Island and the Yukon Delta Coast uh, for Friday. Southeast winds 25 knots, south, 20, south winds 20 knots for the, uh, the Kuskokwim Delta Coast and St. Lawrence Island southeast at 20. And for Saturday, no change for St. Lawrence Island. Small craft advisories for the southwest coast for southeast winds at 25 knots. 15 knots southeast winds for the Pribilofs and St. Matthew Island. Winds will be southeast at 20 knots. Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast uh, for Friday. Basically, uh, southwest to southeast breezes at 10 to 15 knots. South 20 knots for the central coast. And small craft advisories for the western Arctic coast all the way down around Cape uh, Lisburn, Point Hope to Wales. Southerly winds 25 to 30 knots. And then for Saturday, southeast winds 20 to 25 knots from Wales to Cape Beaufort and all the way up to Point Lay, falling back to about 15 knots from the southeast on the central coast. East-southeast winds 15 knots on the eastern coast. For tonight, still some uh, passing areas of light rain, fog, and drizzle with showers into the Brooks Range extending out to the Arctic coast, but amounts will be pretty light. High pressure over the uh, interior, both at the surface and aloft, keeping it uh, mild and dry with variable clouds. A few areas of smoke and some diminishing showers over the eastern Alaska Range and Wrangell Mountain areas. It'll be fair over the panel with light winds just about everywhere, except in advance of that front pushing into the eastern Aleutians. Bring some rain to the Alaska Peninsula, wet for the Pribilofs, Fox Islands, sunny and hot in the interior of Alaska with 70s to mid 80s. And it starts to get hotter over the central and eastern interior, especially in the Tanana Valley Saturday, highs in the lower 80s. Otherwise, fair skies, wet and windy for the Alaska Peninsula. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>